The Truth or Girls. Hi everyone, it's Truth or Girl Sonia here. Um, as you guys know, my son had been kicked out of school. And uh, it was decided by the school, school board that he's going to be having home-based education and he's going to be having a tutor coming in nine and a half hours a week. The, the tutoring is going to start in January. In the meantime, it's basically just up to me to homeschool him uh, just entirely by myself. And I want to give you an update on uh, what we've been doing. A couple things I want to tell you. Number one, my son is diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. He does not have classic autism. He doesn't even fit the like Asperger stereotype, but he does have... A kind of ASD so it's a little different than just you know your average homeschool experience also I have a lot of background in education I have a degree in art education community oriented art education actually and I also had done a one-year program in teaching English as a second language and then transferred into the four-year Bachelor of Education program with focus on teaching English so I have a and I did about uh, two and a half years of the four-year program and then I had my son and I just said enough school Enough. I didn't actually want to work in a school. I don't like this school setting, but let's just say I have a lot of background in education In this video it's like for people who are homeschooling their their kids who are different Whether it's ASD or it's ADHD or they don't have a disorder But you know every kid is actually different and there's a lot of different learning styles and in a lot of ways like the cookie cutter classroom environment uh, doesn't it's not right for everyone. It's actually designed to fit the average. Academically, it's designed to be aimed for average level. There are those who are way ahead. They're not going to be well served. There are those who are a little uh, slower in their learning or have differences. They're not going to be well, well served either. And I'll tell you, when, when I was teaching, uh, it was pretty much stated openly, the teacher that I was working with actually said to me the, these words. She said, those that don't follow, you have to let them fall between the cracks. And she said to me, you cannot give too much attention to the stragglers or the ones that don't learn easily. Because when you're doing that, you're withdrawing, with, withholding your attention from the rest of the class. And when you have 32 kids in a class like I had, uh, there's a lot of kids that need your attention. So this is what the deal is in the school system. By and large, it's sink or swim. And um, there's also a lot of prejudices, I'll tell you, that I witnessed myself, not only like racially and ethnically, but um, socioeconomically, and also w with kids with disabilities. Uh, you know, teachers come in with their own uh, subjective views and prejudices, but I don't want to go right into that. I just want to talk to you a little bit about what I'm doing. So all kids have different ways of learning. And I guess when we think about schooling, we would think like open a book and read something and, and write something and produce something. Uh, but I think to serve kids well that, that have a, diff, a really different learning style, you have to think outside the box. Um, so there, there are three things that I'm going to cover. One has to do with art, I, I guess uh, also with um, history and with English language, like written language production, something that my son has difficulty with. So um, let's just say, first of all, let's talk about history. My son is very, very intelligent, and he has actually a lot of things that he's interested in, but his experience with school has been very bad. Um, I'm talking now mainly like to the, the parents out here, the ASD parents, but if you look at the comments under my videos, you'll see that there, there are some people that will say, my son is a brat, that my son uh, is a bossy little manipulator, that he needs to be spanked, basically comments saying that he needs to be strong-armed, that I am too soft of a parent, um, or that he knows exactly what he's doing and he's in control and all this kind of thing, which isn't true. Uh, and unfortunately, this was also the view of some people who were dealing with him in the educational setting. Uh, it was hard for people to understand that he actually has an ASD because, like, he doesn't look autistic. Like I mentioned before, he kind of... It looks normal, but it looks like he's really not acting right, and so people just can't understand why this is coming from something uh, that's different about his brain, and they, they just seem to think that he really can just control it, and if he's not, it's a matter of him not respecting authority enough, and that he if he just had enough understanding of who's boss, he could just toe the line, but that's actually really not the case. And so, unfortunately, the approach people took a lot was to strong-arm him, uh, including physically, a lot of really negative experiences, uh, restraint holds, punishments, 
and he came home with bruises many times. He was strong-armed a lot, and this is starting at the very beginning. And this has never worked. Uh, what it has done, though, is it's made him hate school. I hate it so much that he's kind of lost his willingness to even open a book or do anything. Because this whole experience has been kind of really traumatic for him. So it's it's hard to get him to open a book and uh, then produce something written because he has a lot of really negative emotions associated with the whole idea of schooling at this point. Truly, this is where we're at. It's been, what, five or six years that he's been in school. And um, this is what it's come down to. Um, as you know, my son also likes videos a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm just working with what we've got going on. Uh, just because he likes videos better than something written, it doesn't mean that uh, there's no opportunity there because there actually is. So for history, we got videos. He's very willing to watch a video. This is one about uh, Terry Jones' medieval lives. So if we want to talk about the Middle Ages and say like the feudal system or we want to talk about society or the technology they had or whatever, we can use a video and then what we do from the video is what you call expansion activities. You watch the video and then you're going to do some project related stuff. You could make a poster or we could act something out or we could try a medieval recipe and really you just have to use your creativity. Uh, I'm going to show you how I, I did this with uh, for English based on a video. Uh, we watched a movie, Florence Foster Jenkins, which is about a, a rich heiress who really wants to be a singer and she thinks she can sing really well, but she actually can't. And uh, she books Carnegie Hall, she does a big show, and then she sees the newspaper review that said she's the worst singer in the world. Um, she basically dies of a broken heart. Um, so we watch a movie preferably like a biography, something educational about a real historical person and, or, you know, a story. His problem is he has a lot of difficulty with expressive language, as in it comes down to difficulty organizing his thoughts. And it's so bad that as soon as you ask him to write, to organize his thoughts into a paragraph or a, a page, um, it just, it's very daunting. It just really overwhelms him. So there can be a lot of resistance. So what I do is I break it down. The first thing he did was I just asked him to just say to me a few things that he could tell me about this person. And so he gave me the sentences and I wrote them down because taking the writing aspect, because he also has trouble with like the fine motor a bit. Um, again, like that's a little bit of scaffolding. So he says what it is and I write it down and then we cut them into strips. And then I have him look at what he has and organize it. I'll say, well, what do you think should come first? And what, do you, what comes in the middle and what comes last? And then he's able to organize those strips. And then I say, well, is there a gap in the information? For example, the first sentence was, uh, she was born in 1868, but he didn't say who. So then after looking at this with the strips, then he puts in Florence Foster Jenkins. Then he adds a bit more information where there are gaps. For example, um, she rented Carnegie Hall and sang there. Well, how did that happen? And why? So then he adds more information. But because it's broken down into such small things and because there's no writing involved, and with the little strips of paper, it's kind of fun to organize them, he was able to produce this whole text, which is the story of her life. And then what I'm going to get him to do is to type it out. So that's what I would consider really good for, in, for, it, for him. This is really great work, written uh, language production. It's really encouraging to him too because it shows him that he can do it. So the next thing was um, art. I'm using this book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, art ed being kind of my specialty, right, that I train for. And this is, it's not about making pretty pictures. It's all about experiencing the shift from your left brain which especially people with ASD tend to be left brain dominant, the shift from left to right. So it's not only good for drawing, but it's kind of a good brain exercise, which hopefully is going to translate into being able to shift over more in real life. And I'll tell you, my son, like a lot of kids with ASD and ADHD, has very, very low what you call frustration tolerance and very um, a lot of difficulty with emotional control. So, and actually to, this po to the point that at this point, as soon as he even thinks something might be challenging, 
he like locks down into a kind of panic. So it's very hard to get him to even comply with just even starting the activity. Whereas with most kids, I could be like, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And they'd be like, yeah, okay. And they would just give it their best shot. But with my son, it's like right away, he, he, he's just locked into anxiety. And then he gets the emotions that he doesn't control well. So it, it's hard for him. But he has windows of receptivity. So I'm looking for those windows. And when I see that he looks receptive and calm, I'm going to use that as an opportunity. Here's one exercise that we did, getting the, uh, the left to right brain shift going, where you draw one side of the vase, which is supposed to also be like a face, and then you draw the other side in mirror image, and this sort of forces the brain to look at the spaces in between and to shift over to right brain mode where you're really seeing the shapes. And the next thing that we did is we're working on this, more left to right brain shift. This is an upside down drawing which you hold upside down and draw it while you're looking at it upside down because this makes the brain actually see the shapes and it gives you that shift over. So the first time he did it, he did this and after about 10 minutes he was so frustrated that he left the room screaming and threw himself onto the bed and had a little bit of a meltdown. Um, in those cases I just back off because he is learning to regulate himself and he'll go on the bed and he'll wail and then he'll get it together. Uh, at school, they, they, I think people tend to feel like they need to get in there and force him to sort of just stop uh, and just sort of control himself, but he's not there yet. So it's better to let it run its course a bit, to just let him pull away for a bit, and, and then he'll calm himself down um, pretty quickly, like within 15 minutes or so. But it was hard for him. And so uh, this is another day later, and we came back to this drawing and look at how much he got done this time. And this time he was able to really zone in and do this for a good 15 minutes. And he and I, we were both feeling very, very good about it. Uh, we did a little science too. So I have this, it's a uh, candy chemistry. And we learned about m molecules and suspensions versus solutions. All that while cooking candy, he made marshmallows. Nice little squishy marshmallows. So wow, we, we really covered a lot of stuff this week and he doesn't realize it, but he's actually learning. He's learning a lot. Yep, I've been tricking him into learning. Tricking him into doing schoolwork. Well, I keep telling him uh, school and learning is not the same thing. Because like I said, he's been kind of really traumatized by school experience. So I'm just doing this video to like, just to share my experience with you guys, parents who have homeschooling or special needs kids who are being homeschooled to let you know what I've been doing. Um, I think this, this is working okay. The last thing I want to say is, you know, from the beginning, uh, I knew my son was different very, very, very early. And I had some instincts about him and how to raise him and how to educate him. And I was coming up against a lot of pressure from society. Uh, pressure to put him in the school system, for one. And that really, I didn't want to do it, but um, I guess I just kind of was like, well, you know, I guess I should, and I put him in, and I feel like it's had a really bad effect. And another thing was with his ASD, a lot of people were like, oh, he's not autistic, he's not autistic, or don't label him. But when he was younger, and I would talk to the doctors about it, they were also kind of like, oh, let's see how it goes, let's wait, uh, maybe he'll grow out of it. When he was five, I started really pushing for it. Um, and I just, I feel like it, my instinct always told me he needs to be evaluated, we need to know what this is. And I feel like I sort of gave in to pressure to just, uh, you know, what people are telling me, like, oh, there's nothing wrong with him or it's just your parenting, which it wasn't. And with the parenting also, I think my approach was working. Uh, I started getting a lot of pressure to use a lot of like, well, super nanny techniques and things that work with NT kids, except they don't work well with kids with ASD or ADHD for that matter. And I pushed really hard with that. At one point I was, uh, you could say my parenting was very punitive, which is what people are telling me now even. They're like, you don't punish him enough. It's not, it's not true. I went through that and I found that that really didn't work. It was counterproductive. I didn't do that in the beginning. It was more understanding, things were going better. I started to push with that. It did not work, it backfired. 
and the school school has still been taking that approach. You need to punish, you need to punish. Um, and it's really not about that, it's about you need to support, support his learning, support his development. And so that's what I'm trying to do now. So I just want to share this experience with you and I hope it's helpful to you. And uh, thanks for giving me a thumbs up. Thank you for your support on Patreon. And thanks for listening to me and I'll see you next time.